Hello everyone, my name is Nathaniel Freeman and this is Free Man's Money. And today we've got a very complicated but important idea for you to understand when you're making money and that is market value. Now before we dive into the meat and potatoes of this thing, let me first say I'm not a financial advisor, I'm not a lawyer, I am a mortgage agent with Dominion Lending and I can do mortgages for anybody in Ontario. Uh, I work primarily in London, St. Thomas, or uh, the general area around southwestern Ontario. But that being said, those are my credentials and what I know. Well, I read a lot of books, so I know far more than that. But today, let's dive into the subject of market value. And if you like the video, smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. So market value. That is the psychology of humanity determining the price and how much things deserve to get paid for. Now that's a complicated thing to understand. And it's a very, it's a thing that changes your perception once you fully get your head around it, but let's, let's start diving into it. So the price of a cup of coffee at Tim Hortons is roughly $2. That's because people have determined that the amount that they're willing to spend on that, oh, hey, Charlie. <laughs> the amount that they're willing to spend on that cup of coffee is $2. If they charge $5 for it, people may still buy it, but it would be substantially less. So it's not, people think that Tim Hortons determines the value of their cup of coffee, and they do in a lot of ways. But what really matters is people's perception of what it's valued at. So Tim Holton says, we think our oh, cup of coffee is worth maybe a dollar. Then they go to a bunch of people and ask them and they go compare to their cup competitors. And they say, oh, everybody's selling this level of coffee, let's say, like the quick, easy, like you can get it on the go uh, coffee for $2. So now we're gonna sell it for $2 and we'll see how many sales we get. And if we're getting a lot of sales, then that was priced correctly. Um, but if they charge five dollars, then sales would usually go down because people would determine that Tim Holton's coffee usually isn't worth that much. Maybe we should go to Starbucks instead and get a five dollar coffee because Starbucks is considered more to be a premium brand. So I hope you're kind of getting where I'm going with here. People determine what they're willing to pay for products. The market is a reflection of that. So let me give you another example. Let's, sit, let's take my house for example. At the time I bought it, which was January of 2019, its perceived value was $225,000, which is what I purchased it at. So the perceived value of this house and its current condition was $225,000. Now I have not done a single thing to this house. I've, well, I've done a little bit here and there, but mainly changing some electrical outlets and nothing fancy. I haven't painted the walls. I haven't changed the flooring, none of that. However, considering how the housing market has gone up in value and St. Thomas especially has practically exploded, my house is now valued at 300,000. Even though nothing changed within the house, the perceived market value of this property given current circumstances is now over 300, which you can see is substantially different from when I bought it one year ago. Well, not even, about 10 months ago. So market value determines the cost of a product or the price of a product. Now let's go on to what we get paid. If you work in Tim Hortons or like I work in a factory full time while I'm transitioning to being a mortgage agent full time. Um, if you work in one of those kind of, you're working for a boss, you're following his direction and you kind of do as he says, you are then selling your time to that individual to perform tasks that he asks for you based off of the amount that he's willing to pay you, which is why somebody at Tim Hortons will get paid like $14 an hour while I get paid 25. It's because the perceived market value of what I'm doing seems to be more, well, it's worth $25 an hour. 
and there are probably seven people lined up willing to do my exact same job for $25 an hour. And the same can be said for true for Tim Hortons. So that individual works for $14 an hour, that's perceived market value. And if that person doesn't want to work for $14 an hour at that job, there are seven other people going to do exactly those tasks for $14 an hour. So let's take an example here. Let's say the individual at Tim Holton said, I'm no longer going to work for $14 an hour. I'm going to work for $30 an hour. Tim Holton will say, well, the value of your services are not worth $30 an hour. So we will not pay that and we'll just bring in this guy that will do it. Now, what happens if everybody working at Tim Hortons and everybody that wants to work at Tim Hortons says we will no longer work for $14 an hour, we will work for $30 an hour. Immediately the salaries of all Tim Hortons employees would go up to be about $30 an hour. And the reason for that is they need employees to run their business. So since they can't replace anybody for $14 an hour, they would try 15, then 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, all the way up to 30, and then say, okay, people are willing to do these set of jobs for $30 an hour. Now, what they will try to do if that did happen is put the cost of that extra $30 an hour back on the customer by making everything more expensive at Tim Hortons. But that's a story for another time. I want to show you guys that what you're getting paid at your job is your perceived market value while doing that job. Now, some people can be overvalued, some people can be undervalued, and this is no definition of what individuals are worth, but what they consider the task you're doing is worth this specific set of money, which means that when you go above and beyond, you may be trying to get a raise or a bonus, but if you just go above and beyond on a regular day, go above their expectations, they're gonna love you for it because they're paying somebody $25 to do this job, but you're doing a job that's worth like $28 only for 25. So they're gonna be like, hey, great job, I love it. But anyways, so that's the perceived market value of individuals in their jobs. <sighs> now, how does this all work together? It's a very complicated structure, but Pretty much when you're selling products are priced to move and they're priced according to the perceived market value. Individuals are paid based off the perceived market value as well. Well, let's say there are three things that the market considers valuable within individuals. There's the perception of your time. There's the perception of the services you can offer. And then there's the perception of the things you own. So three things. So the perception of your time is how much somebody is willing to pay you to do a task. Whatever those tasks are depend on what we can get into that at some other point. But let's say you're working at Tim Hortons. We're going to pay $14 for you to just do these set of tasks. Now, second, there is what you can bring to the table or what you can do. So I am a mortgage agent with Dominion Lending. I can provide mortgages for anybody in Southwestern Ontario and Ontario in general, but I, us I usually work primarily in Southwestern Ontario or London or St. Thomas to be more specific. But since I can provide mortgages to people, it doesn't matter how much time I actually put into it, as long as we package it and the customer gets the mortgage from the bank, the bank is willing to pay me 1% of the mortgage. In most situations, if we have to go to B lenders or private lenders, things change out. But if we're looking with A lenders, usually the A lender pays me a specific 1% amount for getting that mortgage. And it doesn't matter how much time I put into it. I could put in two hours, I could put in 13 days. I'm still gonna get paid the same amount because that's the price for the service. Now, on the other hand, on the third, you have the perception of the things you own. So one is my house, which we've already talked about. It's gone up over $75,000 in value, roughly, but that's perceived market value for that. There's also the stocks that I own, and I hope some of you own stocks as well, which are at a perceived value of about 8,000 right now, and they're paying me dividends of about $400 a year. Now, as you can see, Market value determines almost everything revolving money. 
Even when it comes to stocks, stock price is determined by the market value or what people are willing to pay for that stock. So I know this is a complicated subject. I know market value in general is just a giant idea, but I promise you as soon as you wrap your head around it and you start looking at things of market value, you'll start to piece together why people paid certain amounts or why things cost certain amounts. And then you can start to see whether or not, whether or not things are overpriced, underpriced, or at fair value. Now, if you like the video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys here next time on Free Man's Money. Ciao for now.